Hi everybody, Sky Carl here. Uh, it's been a while, I know, since I made a video, and uh, so I thought it was time to make another one. You know, of all the interests that I have, from music to cooking, to, uh, teaching uh, combat flight sim online, uh, just, you know, I mean, music, banjo stuff, and I'm sure some of you have seen that. One of the things that I've really enjoyed ever since I was young uh, has been electronics. I think it's amazing. And, and one of the areas of electronics, although it's all really cool, uh, I, I really like radios. And you know, nowadays with uh, YouTube having all these really fantastic videos of these very talented people out there showing you things that you couldn't get years ago. I mean, you would have to study books and study books and take classes and get with groups and you still might not learn what you want to what you want to learn. But nowadays, now there's some fantastic uh, videos out there. Uh, Rick McWhorter, uh, All American 5 Radio, his stuff is, is fantastic. Uh, John on uh, uh, Joe or None, and that's his channel. He he's really got some good stuff. I mean, and there's so many more. I I go down the list. I'm you know I'm just throwing these names out at you, and but you can find them. They're out there, and they have fantastic stuff. Especially some of the young people, what they're doing nowadays. Uh, from from <laughs> you see a 15 year old like Speaker Freak 95. Uh, here's a 16-year-old young man that's, he's doing stuff with electronics that I never dreamed of when I was 20. And you see that and you say, wow, there's a hope for the future, you know. But anyway, getting around all that, what I've been messing with lately, uh, I've got some old radios I'm, I've been working on, and i got some projects that I'll maybe get into later. But one of my fascinations that I've always had was crystal radios where you take the radio frequency out of the air and without any added power you run it through uh, your your little radio that you build and you hear the radio signals I think that's amazing and you know there's there's a ton of crystal radios out there now I mean you've got the Foxhole radios where you're using a uh, razor blade with a with a pencil in to uh, dial in you know using it as the diode and and there's just, there's a lot of them out there but I thought you know I want to I want to dig into this a little bit and and find find out for me what kind of radio I would want to build. I mean, sure, now, there's a lot of stuff out there. I got this uh, about eight years ago. You can see it. It's a, uh, you know, it was just something simple that kind of, I thought, well, I'm going to mess with the crystal. Uh, I played with it for a while. I wasn't real happy with what I got at the time. So I went, eh, and then it kind of went by the wayside. Going back even further, if I can turn this without getting in the lamp in the way. I don't know if you guys have seen one of these. Where are they here? These are those, uh, yeah, I got this lamp here. Oh, there goes all my wires, okay. These are those, uh, this one's a 130 and one electronic projects. You know, these are pretty cool because, first of all, if you don't have a breadboard, let me turn back here, if you don't have a breadboard, and you want to do some experiments, you can grab one of those and you can, without even having to solder, you can put these wires together, this wires together, and, and you get us a working circuit. That, you might notice, it's just, you know, it's, it's got dust, it's dirty, it was in the basement, stashed way behind, because after I got a breadboard many years ago, and that kind of <laughs> got shelved, and, and I started working with the breadboard. But it wasn't too long ago when I was looking through, because I thought, I'm going to do electronics again. 
Uh, I'm, you know, let's see what I've still got. I still had my oscilloscope. Uh, I still had, you know, some of this stuff. But I had to uh, kind of regroup and, and put all my things together again. So now, you know, I got a frequency counter. I bought an old uh, ICO uh, signal generator, which, you know, I, I, if you're going to install these, I think you really need one. And I got it like dirt cheap on eBay. And I, I just recapped it, and it's working great. Uh, I, I managed to get a hold of an isolation transformer. And guys, if, if you're going to work on radios, especially the older ones with the tubes because they run really high voltage, you definitely want an isolation transformer. Uh, I got a power supply. I, I, I just been gathering and going as I go along. So what I want to do is I want to take a look at what <clears throat> I, I, I've been doing with just recently on these crystals and you know he, here's my thought all these people are out there sharing all this wonderful knowledge and, and I'm taking advantage of that you know I sit and watch I watch for hours I just love it to me that's great entertainment but you know I'm, I, I'm taking and I'm not giving back so uh, well, would be would be a good place to start where maybe I could do something, maybe contribute just a little bit, help one person out there. I'm doing something. Uh, well, you know, I've been kind of messing with these crystal radios, and I thought maybe I'd show what I've been doing and my results. And somebody out there might say, you know what, that's the one that I want to try. I might want to do it that way. So, this is what I've been doing. I've first of all, I've been making several different coils. I made this one the other day. Uh, I got I put caps in them because I want to check out all the different areas. You know, even though this is like the little toy thing, it's got a, it, first of all, it, it's got a variable capacitor. I'm not using it right at the moment, but I, it's there. And it's got a great coil. Well, it turns out that I could pick some stuff up with this coil. And then last but not least, isn't this great? Once again, the one in 130 science fair. If you look, here's the antenna that they use. And it makes a great coil. Matter of fact, I think in the, the original crystal radio that you would build with this, I think you used this for the for the winding. You know, and it's got an audio transformer. It's got a lot of stuff on here. It's got, now this variable capacitor, evidently sometime in the past I had pulled it for a project, so I, I had another one around and I stuck it back on there, but I'm using this one for my, uh, to make my adjustments. So I thought, well, okay, I got all this, why don't you shoot a video real quick. And, and just show everybody what you're doing. And like I said, if it can help, it'll help. I'm, I'm trying to show you some of the results that I've gotten. Uh, for one thing, now, you, if anybody that's been out there already tried to build a crystal, that ground is so important. If you don't have a good earth ground, chances are you're not going to pick up. If you pick up anything, it's going to be very, very faint. I was actually working on these the other night. And son of a gun, I've got a deal where I plug mine in. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, I actually got some before I plugged it in. It was just in uh, the ground wire was on. It wasn't plugged in where I use where I plug it to. And it was there. It was very very faint, but it was there. But I tell you what, as soon as I hit that ground, wow, uh, it, it was a really good clear station. It makes all the difference in the world. Another thing that I'm using right now, uh, you have to have an antenna. Now, what I've done, I'm a single guy, so I can kind of string a wire around if I want. You know, uh, that doesn't always go over well with wives sometimes. But if you've got your own little corner, you can do this. I took about 15, 20 feet, and just old speaker wire, and kind of like a dipole, I ran it up. And then after that, I ran it out and around out into my uh, 
like my garden room, my, my window room out there, sunroom, and, and ran it out to the window. So I've got a, a pretty good run. And I've also tried fractal uh, antennas were, and actually they, they do kind of work a little bit. And I've also put some other ones together here now, but this one's been working really good. So I think for these experiments, I'm going to stick with the long wire. So those are the two things that you have to have. You have to have an antenna going out, and you have to have a good ground. Now, what I've been using for ground, here I can show you. I've got a lot of a lot of plugs, connections, and wires, and uh, that's why uh, when you have them around, a lot of alligator clips, it's it makes things so much easier. But I've got a banana plug on one end and an alligator clip on the other for my ground coming in. And then on my power strip, I take and plug it in to one of the ground plugs on the power strip. You know, now a lot of people will say, oh, you're going to get interference through the house and all that. I haven't, first of all, I'm not, I'm not on a line that's running through a lot of stuff. I don't have a real big house that has a lot of appliances going on with people running around running things. But I found that it works really good, and instead of having to run a wire downstairs and over across and everything to get to a water pipe, or having to try to go, you know, find a way to go outside, run it outside, so that means that there's going to be an opening somewhere uh, in the winter is not good. So overall, this is the, I found to be the best ground. Now you might decide, well, you know, I've got a water pipe nearby, or well, I can run it out my window and, and go right into the ground, you know, run a spike into the ground and tell your own line on there, you've got a great ground. But this is what I use. So uh, having said that, I just uh, want to let you know you have to have that ground. Now, another thing I found, uh, it really does depend on the time of day. Uh, you may have some stations that come in fantastic in the morning, and you can hardly find them at night. Or uh, you, you can have, have stations that are close by, and they might actually overpower you, and might not sound right. So that's the cool thing about crystal radios. They're, you know, it's not turning on, the lights come on, and oh, I can turn to 1047 or I can turn to 800 AM. Um, you have to dig a little bit, and that's part of the cool thing about it. So uh, having said that, I'm gonna, I got a couple shots I want to show you, the different things I've been doing. I want to show you some of the coils. I showed you that one that I had. I've got one here. That, that I, I, now this I found in my junk drawer from a long time ago when I was like, well, I'm going to do crystals back then. And it was one of those things I tried for a while, popped it over on the side, and uh, I really didn't have that much luck with it before. But I found lately, uh, doing what I'm doing, uh, it's working great. So, okay, I... Uh, like I said, I'm, there's a couple things on here that, that I want to show you, uh, some of the equipment that I'm using, and uh, my workbench that's a mess that, you know, I straighten up and I get to doing stuff and it's a mess again. So, uh, I guess that's just the way my workbench is supposed to be. But anyway, okay, let's, let's look at some of these things and... Uh, and, and we'll get going on here. Okay, now here's my oscilloscope. It's an old one, but it works great. And then on, on top of that, I've got two frequency counters. Actually, the little small one works a lot better. You know, that's one of those deals where you, know, you think more is better, but not really. And I got my power strip below that. Now here's that ICO signal generator that I was talking about. Like I said, it's an older model. I got it on eBay, but it, the thing works fantastic. It's uh, just a really good little little outfit there. And uh, thanks to John at Jora One, that cable uh, I got off eBay works great with it. Now here, this is a uh, a resistor 
adjuster. In other words, I can set this up and it's like an adjustable resistor. And back there, now that is my uh, power supply. This here is an ESR. And I've got this. It's a kit. Uh, normally it's like 150 bucks. I got the kit for like 75 and put it together. And it's for uh, measuring the resistance in uh, on capacitors while they are in circuit. It, it really helps so you don't have to be pulling capacitors out to check them. So uh, that was a, uh, a pretty good deal. I'm, I'm glad I got that. And there's my part of my messy desk. Here's a old tube radio that uh, because of uh, America all-American 5 radio, Rick McWhorter, I'm going to turn that into an, an instrument. Back there, it's another eBay buy, and I know you got to be careful when you get them on eBay, but that's a, a tube tester, and hopefully it'll cover what I want it to cover. Now here's two things you have to have. Voltometers. One is an analog and the other one's my digital. And folks, you got to have those if you're going to do anything in electronics. That's just the way it is. Okay, well, you've seen some of that. Now, uh, in, in, in the following video videos that I do, what I, what I like is to show you the results. I can uh, take and show, okay, when I hook this up to this, this is what I get, and this is the results I get. And I think uh, that will really help because then if somebody wants to build one, they have several different ways they can go. Okay. We'll, we'll see you next time around. Thanks for watching.